One of my favorite little tricks with the Google Home Mini is that I don't have to wait. And what I mean by that is instead of waking up the device and then pausing for a few seconds, I can just say, hey Google, let's go. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation and the frustration out of something that happens as you get older. And I don't know if this is just me, but I find myself remembering less and less as I get older. And that means I've actually had to rely on this product to help me more and more. So these tips and tricks will really help with remembering a ton in your life. Everyone knows that you can control lights and light bulbs and light switches and all kinds of little smart plug devices, but I'm betting a lot of you aren't using the full capability of the Google Home Mini. As we enter into any room with a Google Home product in it, we can request that it turns on the lights or turns on devices that we know we're going to use. And that's really great. We can even do it before we enter the room if we have multiples of these throughout our home. But as we leave the area and stop using the device, we still have to remember to turn it off in order to save power. Well, not anymore. There's actually a little kind of hidden command here that you can use with a number of different device types. And this will allow you to say, turn off the device in 15 minutes or turn off the device at a certain time. So this gives you the ability to schedule on the fly. Now, there are certain device types that that works with and certain device types that it doesn't. That initially seems like a real block here because it's certain device types that are going to work, but in a lot of cases, you can go ahead and change the device type inside of the Google Home app and then that becomes something that you can schedule. But let's be honest, you don't want to come in, say, turn on the lights and then have to say, turn them off in 15 minutes again. I just want one command. To do this, you can create a routine and there's nothing really hidden about routines, but there are a couple of hidden little components within routines that will really help with this situation. One of the hardest things of working with these voice assistants is that memory component and you have to remember exactly how to say these things or it's not going to work. Well, that's actually one of the ways that routines can really help us because it's not just one command that you can stick in there. You can actually stick a number of commands in and have slight variations on how you would say it. And as you do that, you're gaining the ability to remember one of the many ways that you need to say this to the Google Assistant to execute this routine. The other hidden component is the customized command. And a lot of people don't use this, but what it really is, is the ability to type in, in the app, anything that you would normally say to these devices. So in this case, this allows us to add the second command, which is to turn off the device in 15 minutes or at a specific time. Of course, you can use any amount of time, really. One of the things that I don't love about the Google Assistant, and I wish they would kind of solve, is solved by doing it this way. Now, what you'll find is that every time you request something, the Google Assistant comes back and says, yep, I did that, or nope, totally messed that up. And when you get used to living with this thing in your home, it becomes a bit of a barrier to actually using it. Now, within a routine like this, what you're going to find is that it is silent, or you're going to get much less back, unless something is not working. So this is one of the really great ways that we can quiet down the Google Home Mini. One of the biggest use cases for me with the Google Home Mini, and especially the newer Google Nest Mini, is the ability to play music on the device and other sources of content, things like podcasts or reading books from the audiobook library. All of that is great. And one of the things you might not know right off the bat is that you can connect multiple music services to the Google Home Mini and then you can request that specific service by name. Now, whatever you've set as a default service, you don't have to remember the name of that. You can just request that music or request the artist or the genre or the playlist that you have. So you don't have to remember all of the services and especially that default service. But we've talked about, you know, remembering to shut things down and something that I've found myself doing 
doing is turning on music and leaving the house and totally forgetting this playing all day and that's kind of hard on your bandwidth and it's just a lot of usage that you don't need so you can actually with in these commands ask to play music for a set period of time and the device will turn off after that. A couple of ways that I found that really impactful in my life is before bedtime. If I want to just play a little bit of music for a little bit of time, that's great. I've also used it with my kid and you know the question that keeps coming back somehow whenever we're talking about brushing teeth is how long do I have to do this for? Well that's a pretty simple answer. One of the things that will help your memory is to actually get a good night sleep. And there are a number of things with the Google Home Mini that we can use to ensure that we get that good sleep and then maybe we can remember a few things the next day. So one of my favorite features that really lets me sleep throughout the night, seems to really improve things, is the white noise feature. And it's as simple as asking Google Home to play white noise. But one of the ways that you can kind of take this to the next level is with the Google Nest Mini especially, you know, that's got a little bit better of a speaker than the older version. And when you take those and you pair them in a stereo pair, this becomes a really great effect, a great sound effect for the different white noises. And that's one of the other little tips and tricks is that you don't just have to say white noise. There's actually a large number of different sounds that you can request so it's not just play white noise it's play rain sounds which is my personal favorite and there are times when I don't want the white noise all night and I found myself wanting to have that turn off without waking up in the middle of the night and doing that and so again this little simple trick of play rain sounds for one hour works really well to get me to sleep and then it kind of ends that after that time. Now of course you can use this within a routine and that can be your customized action to end the whole routine that again gives you all these benefits of routines that we talked about earlier. In most cases, people will use the good night routine to execute a number of things and then do something like play that white noise for however long they'd like. But there was an idea that came to me by way of our Facebook group, and this was a little bit of a different idea. Now, what the person was doing was they were turning on a light a kind of far away from the bed they could see it and it was a color changing light and what they would do is throughout the night they would change the color of the light and this would help them to know what time it was and whether it was kind of time to get up now i think a better way to go about this is actually with the white noise machine and using maybe every one to two hours a different white noise sound to signify where you are in the evening and that's not going to just wake you up like a light is likely to do. Again, since I'm getting old, one of the things that I have struggled with is, you know, I have multiple of these throughout my home and I get them, I plug them in somewhere, and then I don't necessarily want to set up all of these different components. And so what has happened is in the evenings, I've started to lose track of which ones are being set low enough and the volume isn't really high and going to blow me away. And so there's been some times when I've asked a request of one of these, someone else is sleeping and they're getting blown away. So one of the really easy ways to ensure that this happens night in night out is not a routine because then you have to kind of track those but the night mode setting inside of the device settings is really easy to get the led brightness a little bit lower a little bit more muted plus the volume set at a certain time on each device every night without ever having to remember to do it one of the really nice things about night mode is that you can also turn on do not disturb mode and that stops all kinds of communication, all kinds of sounds from coming through these Google Home Minis. Now, you know what? When I think about my life and how complex things are, I just, I wanna keep my brain a little more free of yeah, those, those mundane things to remember. Things like your bike combination, your bike lock combination, or your guest Wi-Fi password. I just don't wanna have those things 
jammed into my head and there's actually a really great way we can use the Google Home Mini to handle this for us. There are nuances to this, but it becomes a really great system for remembering things like your bike lock combination. So the command is to ask Google to remember my bike lock combination is, and then you give it that combination. Now, I'll tell you those nuances hit right away. If you say my bike lock combination is 10, 14, 18, it's going to tell you that your bike lock combination is October 14th, 2018. And that would be kind of a problem because you'd have to sit there and do the math. Then you just add things like number 10, number 14, number 18, and it puts it all in that message or that memory and it stores it for you so that at any point you can come back to your Google Home or the Google Assistant on a phone, which is more likely for something like a bike lock combination and ask, hey, what is my bike lock combination? You're gonna get that answer back. There is a whole management system for this and it's actually really easy to find your memories just by searching exactly what it is that you've told. So you request what the memory is or you actually can just say open memory and it'll give you your first three. But if you just ask what is my bike combination, you know what you gotta go and search on your account.google.com activity page and then you can delete that entry and it deletes the memory for you. One of the great things of that memory feature is that you can kind of start to put in things that you need to remember about the people in your life. And speaking of those people in your life, that's where the Your People section of the Google Home application becomes really powerful. It allows you to put in a number of pieces of information about those people and then those are things you don't need to recall. Plus, you won't need to recall exactly what their name is in your contacts in order to call someone, and that's because you can put in little nicknames if they're household contacts or if they're set as household contacts. You can put in these little nicknames. Plus, for people who are like your father, you can actually say, call my father, and that will get you right to that person. So as long as you're entering in this information one time, you don't need to remember everything. There are a few places in my life that I frequent. They're kind of tucked away in a neighborhood or they're hidden around a number of weird residential streets. Well, this can actually be solved. You can enter them into the Your Places section and then anytime you want to get navigation, you can actually request that. And if you have the Google Assistant on your phone, you are getting that message on your phone and it's a one tap to your favorite navigation application. This is really powerful for getting to those little places. Plus, you don't necessarily have to remember the name of that place because you're putting it in your places. You get to name it something custom. Speaking of memory, one of the best features to use is the reminders. And I use these all the time to be able to kind of prompt myself with the Google Home. And again, that Google Assistant application also prompts me on my phone. So really beneficial just for getting those basic reminders. But that's not a hidden tip or trick. We gotta go deeper. One of the things I like to do with this is to use the information that's in front of me or the information that I know about at the time when I'm creating the reminder. And a great example is, you know, you go and you get a bill, but you don't wanna pay that. You wanna keep your money till the very last second and then you pay your bills, right? Well, you can actually put all of the information you're going to need into the reminder and that includes the dollar amount. So I have put in the dollar amount into the reminder and this reminds me on the day who I need to pay and how much I need to pay them. Custom lists are very useful. You can go ahead, create whatever custom list you'd like, and then you attach that to a service like Google Keep, and you're able to reference that on your phone or your tablet or even online, and that's a really great use case, but honestly, the thing I use the most is the shopping list. As I'm adding things into the shopping list, I know that when I get to the grocery store, quite frankly, I'm going to forget that I've done all of this work. So the first time I am adding something into that shopping list, one of the things that I do is I create a reminder to check my shopping list. Now, 
you don't necessarily at that point know when you're going to the grocery store. I mean, I'm so random and ad hoc, I have no idea. So instead, what I do is I create a location-based reminder. Now, this is going to take the Google Assistant application on your phone, and you're allowing some of these tracking things to go on. That will naturally happen if you've just allowed kind of the normal permissions that the Google Assistant requests. But what you can do is create a reminder and then when it says when, then you come back and you say the address of the place. What's even better is if I stick it into my places or the your places section of the app, well, then I have a shortcut to say when I get to the best grocery store, that's when I want you to tell me to check my shopping list so I don't forget anything. Quite often, I'll come to my Google Home Mini and I'll ask kind of a general question. I might be asking something about, let's pretend Scarlett Johansson and if she will call me. And then I start to get back a lot of information read from a website. Now, with the Google Home Mini, you don't have any visual interface and you can lose that information really quickly, especially if it's Scarlett's phone number. Now, when you're getting this occurring, number one, you could go buy a smart device Display, but you could do the free thing, which is to install the Google Assistant application, log in with the same account that you're using with these, and then you will actually get a notice plus all of the information and a one tap click or one tap to get to the website with all of that great Scarlet information on it. Now, in order to get that to happen, there's actually a setting that you need to set, and there's actually a secondary component to that that is really helpful. So, you know what, sometimes you're asking a question and it's gonna require a setting to change. And a great example is when you're trying to make a phone call to someone, oftentimes they'll say, you gotta go do something in this section of the app. Well, you don't have to remember anymore what that section of the app is if you turn on this setting because it sends you a direct link to the settings in the application. Now, the other thing you can do to not remember everything about these settings and all of these different components is to use the little search bar that is now at the top of the Google Home and Google Assistant apps. And the final thing that you can do to not have to remember all of these new features, crazy things that are going on with the Google Home is to actually watch our smart home news playlist that is up on screen that will show you some of these new things that come to these devices every few weeks. So thanks for watching today, everyone. And of course, don't hate, automate.